Activity 1 is focusing in on the professional skill of analysis with a sub-skill of consider. Now if we just reflect back on what these skills get us to do, analysis is about thoroughly investigating and researching the information that we are given. Now as we've seen a number of times in the course book, we are not able to provide you with a huge number of exhibits to analyse to come to any kind of conclusion. On the day of the exam there will be, as we said a few times also, a number of exhibits for you to work your way through and it could be that you have to assimilate two or three different exhibits to come to the right conclusions. Now when we consider the sub-skill of consider, what we're thinking about there is looking at the information carefully again to try and get at the implications for the organisation. So what we need to think about is we need to look at the requirement carefully to think, well, what would be the implications I'm trying to get across to management? What's really important for me to highlight to them? Let's have a look at the setup for the question. So it tells us we're a finance professional working for ABC Co. So we have an internal role on this particular occasion. And we are working for this company that specialises in cutting edge technological innovations, which is sales to the general public. So our requirement says, using the information, discuss the implications, which is actually the wording that we have for the professional skill of consider, the implications of the principle of the triple constraint. Now, if I was doing this in the exam, the first thing I'd want to remind myself of is what is the triple constraint. So I'd be thinking, I want to find any information that I can around the scope of the project, the time frame of the project, and the budget of the project. So I'm trying to then find any information around those three, particularly in this scenario, when it says also in relation to the launch of the T4i. So it does sound like there's gonna be a new product launch. We know they're at the cutting edge of technology. And so those would be the three things in the back of my mind as I go through and read the scenario. So what you need to do now is to spend some time reading through Exhibit 1, looking for any evidence of any kind of priorities out of the triple constraint there might be. So is, are there any clues around time frame being more important than, say, budget? Or is the scope of the project more important than time frame? And just trying to understand how you can then prioritise it for the management when you write your answer to them. So take a few minutes to do that, put a plan together, and then play the debrief to this example. With activity one, the key thing that we must show our marker is that we have analysed and considered the information in front of us. So we know the requirements about the triple constraint and what we've got to very clearly show the marker is that we've thought about that in the context of this organisation. Now, when I was reading the information through, one thing that came through very clearly to me was that time frame was quite a priority for them. You could add to this in terms of the dates. So you are told in the very first line, the current date is March 2000 X5, and they're looking to launch this on the 1st of May 2000 X5. So we're only talking two months. And the key reason why this becomes a priority is that they have already made a public announcement of that launch date. They've also booked a venue. And so I would argue for them to have to turn round and cancel all of that would be quite, quite embarrassing for them. Uh, probably involve quite a lot of extra cost as well if they decide to move the date of the launch. Now, admittedly, scope appears to be very closely tied into that. And although I've called it the second priority, I would actually argue that it's probably a very close second because they have to make the modifications, otherwise they cannot take any orders. So if they go to the launch date without the scope of the project being fully completed, in other words, having the modifications that the government have suggested, it again could be quite embarrassing. Now, why have I put this second rather than first? Well, you could argue that you are able to launch, but with what I've called a caveat there, so you could make it very clear to the attendees that you can come to the launch, you can see this, we will not be able to take orders because because we're just waiting for the sign off. It's not great, it wouldn't be a perfect solution, 
And this is why I've said it's a very close second, but I think it would be a way of still getting to the time frame and still being able to, to launch. Now, one part of the triple constraint that's not mentioned at all within the scenario is budget. Nothing is mentioned about budget, about how much money they have spent, how much more money they have got to spend, no information whatsoever. Now, if I were in the exam, I might well be sat there thinking, well, what on earth do I write? There's no information. Really, all we can say about budget is they must be given an appropriate budget basically to make this all happen. In other words, the management team, if they consider time frame and scope to be the two priorities, then actually the budget may have to be substantial in order for that to happen, especially given the short time frame of only two, two to three months. Now, what we have hopefully shown the marker there with those comments is that we have considered the information in exhibit one, and that's a professional skill we're trying to show them. We haven't just done a bit of a, a kind of dump of the theory around the triple constraint and just said this is what it means we've thought about the three parts we've thought about which one takes priority and we've then got across to management that if that is the priority then the budget has to perhaps give a little bit and we've got to make sure right right amount of funds is allocated to the project